Hi, this is Sharona. And I'm Wisdom. And this is WS Vibes TV. So, hi everyone. We are going to be discussing about when Wiz and I met physically face to face. But before we get into our discussion about our meeting for the first time, first I would like to say please um, everyone subscribe. We want at least 1,000 yeah. subscribers. Our first 1,000. Our first 1,000. Right. And if you can hit the thumbs up button, also notification button so you'll know when we have our next videos being released and share and comment. Right. All right, so Wiz and I, we seen each other for the first time. It was um, in November of 2015. And I flew from Atlanta, Georgia to Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, to answer the call of love. Yeah, to answer the call of love. Mm -hmm. um, I flew out that night. It was on Thanksgiving night. And um, I arrived in Lagos that afternoon. I had a, um, a layover in France. I love laying, laying over in France, by the way. That, that's a really nice airport to mm. have a layover in. Mm. I believe that layover probably was like about, probably like three hours, a three hour three layover. Hours. About three hours. No, it wasn't It wasn't that long. But when we were going back, it was around, it was about five hours, right? Something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Going back, it was really long. But yeah, um, yeah. wow, you had a good memory. Mm. You got a memory, you. memory like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so Wiz, can you uh, discuss how did you feel leading up to the time that I was coming to Nigeria? Uh, well, um, being the first time um, to meet you, of course, um, I was anxious to see you. Uh, that night, I didn't sleep. Um, I didn't sleep well because, you know, the anticipation, you know what I'm saying? The, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, patiently waiting to, for your arrival. So I didn't sleep um, very well that night. So, Well, when I was um, on the airplane, I was like reflecting and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to West Africa all by myself. I never flown by myself anywhere, let mm -hmm. alone going over internationally to um, Nigeria. But I want to say I felt very at peace. I felt so at peace. Um, and I was just thinking as I was flying over to Nigeria, I was just saying how this, I was reflecting how the relationship really has really expanded me and, you know, um, stretched me and took me out my comfort zone, which I'm so, so thankful and grateful for. That is the power of love. Love will definitely uh, take you to uh, the place you never think you would uh, you would go when love comes knocking or calling. Right. So yeah, it will take you to different part of the world you never dreamed you would be, mm -hmm. such as as you coming to Africa when you never had the mind of coming to Africa. So yeah, I. I never dreamed about going to Africa, never desired to go to Africa. So like people say, you never say never, never say you never gonna, you know, do or go somewhere. Right. Yeah. So when I landed into Lagos, I messaged you, right? Yeah. And let you know that I was there. How did you feel when I messaged you and say I landed? Yeah, I had a sense of relief first to, uh, to know you, you came to, I mean, you, arrived safely and then um, you arrived safely mm -hmm. and then uh, also to see you was a big deal for me you know yeah so yeah so when um I went and got my baggage and everything like that and you had told me you said you know you messaged me and said don't talk to anybody you know don't let nobody take your baggage or, you know, cause people, there were gentlemen that were offering, you know, to help carry my luggage. And I was like, no, I'm okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm okay. And so, um, I was, I told you what I had on 
And as I was walking out of the airport, like I walked right into you, you know, it was so shocking. I, I thought that once I got out the airport that I would be standing and waiting, looking for you, but you, you know, you came straight to me. And um, I felt a little bashful. Like, you know, like a little kid, like, you know, when you're in grade school, elementary, and there's a boy you have a crush on. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, had a crush. I had that crush feeling like, oh, he, like, God, he's right here. And, you know, we hugged and everything. Yeah. And um, it was just and two, two relatives. Was, two relatives was with you. comfortable as comfortable as possible at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And so we took pictures, took pictures, me, you, and your um, two relatives. Right. Yeah. So then um, we left the airport and we traveled to Victoria Island. Let me just say, when I told Wiz I want to be somewhere that is, you know, comfortable, somewhere that, you know, is really nice, Victoria Island is a very nice place to stay. Yeah. But before we got there, you you were having that things you've never seen how people drive in Nigeria. And oh the my gosh! Adrenaline. adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. Let me just say, driving through Lagos. Oh my God! It's like a night a nightmare. Like it's so crowded and cluttered, mm. and people are bumper to bumper. I think it's worse than New York. Yeah, Lagos is so busy, it's so a hell busy place. Yeah, and work. I mean, I literally was holding my heart because everybody was so close together and they're beeping their horns and stuff. And then, you know, the driver putting on the brakes and all that. And I'm like, all like, all like this. It, <laughs> it was just crazy. But once it was time for us to drive over the bridge to mm. go to Victoria Island, you know, it was smooth sailing, wasn't crowded. Yeah, it there's a fine. saying in Nigeria that if you can dress, if you can drive um, well in Lagos, then you can drive well every, anywhere in the world. Well, I vowed that's one place I would never drive <laughs> is in Lagos. Maybe Lakey. Lakey seemed like, you know, it's more spacious, not as crowded. I think I could probably drive Lakey, but mm. I, I wouldn't drive through the city of Lagos at all. <laughs> No. Yeah, so that was your first encounter, your first experience. Yeah, so let's tell them about when we got to the hotel, what happened. Mm. They, couldn't, they couldn't find our reservations. Right. That was another crazy stuff. Yeah, so we get to the hotel. What was the name of the hotel? Avenue Suit. Ebony, Ebony Suit. Yeah. Well, y'all call it Suit. We call it Sweet. US. Okay, sweet. We call it Sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we went to Avenue Suites. It's a very nice hotel. It was a five-star hotel. It was very luxurious. And it was gated, a gated hotel. And so we get there, pull out the itinerary. The lady looks up the itinerary up in the system, cannot find our reservation. Yeah. So we're standing in the lobby for like a good hour or so, a little over an hour. And so we eventually ended up, I was, you know, called the phone number that's on the itinerary to actually speak to someone mm -hmm. and everything. And so he, the, the guy said that he was going to um, fax something over. And so we were, you know, waiting for it, waiting for it. And the guy was like, so we called again, like, did you send it? And he said, yeah, I sent it and nothing wasn't coming through. So. And that was, um lesson learned um, the subsequent uh, visit we had to make sure that the name is reflecting and everything was all right before we checked into the hotel unlike that you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so yeah the next visit made sure we confirmed right. ahead of time that's right yeah so all right so then you know, they were even uh, talking of putting us in another hotel like in yeah they made it seem like we was gonna have yeah. to go get another hotel and i was just like please say this is was, not happening it was crazy yeah. i was so I, I was calm but at the same time i was so mad inside like well you sure that? didn't show it you didn't yeah, show I did. it i didn't yeah yeah you didn't show I was it. just at the counter making sure that the lady is actually engaged 
yeah, yeah. finding out uh, finding solution to what was going on yeah. right so they was going to go ahead and give us a room anyway and just so happened as soon as they was giving us a room the the paperwork came through showing that exactly. the hotel was paid for exactly. so so that that came out great so let's see oh remember okay so we we go and we take up everything take our suitcases upstairs mm -hmm. and when we get to the hotel room my heart was like boo, 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 boo. did you like the hotel did you like the hotel room yeah i love the hotel yeah. room it was right. gorgeous well, it was, it was well, gorgeous yeah. but getting back i was trying to say how my heart was pounding and it wasn't that it was anxiety or I felt like, oh, I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. It was more of um, a, like a love connection. You ever watch Popeye when Popeye was in, you know, in love with, um, oh, what's that, that lady name? Um, olive oil. When, when Popeye is in love with olive oil and it shows his heart pounding, beating. Mm -hmm. Well, it was like that connection that, that was so strong and that I felt for Wiz and he was like is that your heart beating like that I was like yes you know yeah. so it was that that connection that's all it was I was good I was awesome the SI the the visit was very brief it was three days right three yeah. it was three and a half days so, yeah yeah okay. so but uh, I enjoyed it it was meeting for the first time and uh, we had time to talk you know walk around yeah friends and, yeah walk around the area yeah. went to restaurants um the reason why my visit was so short was because i had just started in, in a, another job a new job that past summer so i didn't have too much vacation time but any time was enough i mean three mm -hmm. and a half days I wasn't going to go another year you know without seeing my whizzy so um made sure you know I went to Nigeria before 2015 left mm. but um I was jet lag you know because of the time difference I was still on Atlanta time because it was jet lag I was like really still kind of tired so I'm up to like three in the morning you're knocked out sleep and then you're up at seven and I'm still knocked out sleep so yeah and finally I decided to take you out to eat at uh, what is that Johnny Rocket Johnny Rocket and then they my had American woman food American was food. was tip, uh, tiptoeing on uh, yeah yeah you were literally not walking on the sand even when you <laughs> when you wearing sandal, and I was a bit embarrassed because that attracted attention of the passerby and the people by the roadside. And then she had to explain to me that even in U.S., she find it difficult walking uh, on the sand. Well, what it is in Victoria Island? Victoria Island used to be a lot of beach, from what mm -hmm. Wiz told me. It used to be all beach, mm -hmm. and they made it whereas though they built on the beach. Yeah. So there was like sand the that's roadside. on the roadside as you, as we were <clears throat> walking towards the diner where we were going to eat at, mm -hmm. and there was like a, a church, a small church congregation a outside, yeah. a fellowship yeah. outside having church. And we're walking and I'm tiptoeing on the sand because I didn't like how it felt under my sandal. So it was embarrassing to Wiz, very embarrassing. Right. He was like, why are you, why are you <laughs> walking like that? And I, I just didn't like the feeling of it. <laughs> but when I got to the United States and then uh, we've been to different places, we've gone to nature walk and she repeated the same thing. And even walking on the carpet, uh sometimes when we go to the gym uh she will jump over the carpet and i was like what was that even when yeah. you're putting on shoes like it's, it's it's funny but yeah i understand i don't know yeah when we go nature well i don't want to go off the subject about nature trail maybe mm -hmm. we'll do that talk about that another time mm -hmm. yeah but yeah um our visit it was short but to me we said it went fast to me time stopped yeah in a way it kind of stopped to me i wasn't focused on oh i gotta 
fly out Monday night. You know, I was just enjoying every moment. We did, of course, go to the gym. As some of you guys know that I'm I'm a gym rat. I got to get into the gym. Mm. <laughs> so the um, the hotel had a had a gym area. The people, oh my God, the people at that worked at the hotel. They were so nice. Hospitable. Yeah, very hospitable towards us. Very generous, and always asking us, "Did we need anything?" Opening the door for us, you know. Mm-hmm. So we took pictures with them before, you know, at the end, at the end of our visit, we um, took pictures with them. They, they didn't want us to leave. Right. So let's discuss about when it was time for me to go. We, you know, on our way back to the airport. Of course, it was, uh, it was a bit hard to say goodbye, uh, I mean, from the both sides, but we understand that it's temporal and at the same time you need to go to work so uh we just have to and responsibilities right other responsibilities right. family responsibilities mm -hmm. yeah so you know we're we're heading back to lagos airport um that late evening my flight was leaving out around 9 30 10 o'clock that night mm. and you know i'm checking in my bags with you know he's with me as i'm checking my bags and you know they go through your bags and legos they literally open up your bag and go through your suitcase and all that stuff and mm. then i check in my bag then we're walking you know towards where i gotta you know give my passport so we stand out there for a while and of course, I want him to, you know, him to get home at a reasonable time. Don't want him out, you know, mm -hmm. late or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that what made it so easy for us to depart, we didn't shed no tears or anything like that, mm -hmm. is because we knew that it was temporary. Mm -hmm. We knew that our separation would be you know, temporary, that it wouldn't always be that way. Yeah. And so I'm in some groups in Facebook and um, a lot of the women a lot of the women say you know, oh I miss I miss my, you know, my man or my mate or, you know these are, are, are guys that who they're in a committed relationships with overseas and some of them ask, you know, how is it that, you know, you do it as far as dealing with a long distance relationship? And uh, my comment normally be is you have to keep in mind that it's only temporary. That's how you get through, you know, the time of that distance is knowing that it won't always be like that. Right. So that helps, you know, get you through those moments where, you know, you're really missing the person that you love that lives overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. So. So um, I guess we're gonna just go ahead and wrap it up and everything. We are done discussing how you know we met. Right. Yeah. So you guys, next time, and remember, uh, don't forget to subscribe. We, we're. Um, trying to get up to at least 1,000, our first 1,000 subscribers. Click the like button. Also comment, share, and hit the notification. And please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Right. Peace. Love you all. Bye. Bye.